As I think about the concept of change management or sometimes called change control, I remember back in the early days when it was just like, hey, why don't we just make this change and see what happens? Well, that might be okay in a very small environment or a home environment, but when we have other systems, and other people involved, that attitude of let's just change it and see what happens can cause disastrous results. And part of the reason that can impact security is because we talked about in a previous video the concept of the triad, the CIA triad, confidentiality, data integrity, and availability. So if we make a change and that change brings down an entire system or an application or some type of service that's needed, that would definitely cause a lack of availability. Or if we're making a change and we accidentally open up ports or protocols through our routers and firewalls that shouldn't be allowed, that could negatively impact our confidentiality because we might be allowing unintentionally an attacker or an unauthorized individual to get access either through our network or for setting up access controls on a server and we incorrectly set those up, that could provide unintentional access to an unauthorized individual. And over the years, I've grown to appreciate change management more and more because in the early days, I thought it was just a pain. I wanted to make a change on the network, either to the routers or switches or firewalls or the servers. And it felt like change management was just a bunch of hoops and things I had to jump through before I could just go to work and get the job done. And some of the changes may be something like changing the driver on a network card for a server or for a computer, or it could be changing the configuration on a computer or a server, or it could be upgrading the BIOS or the firmware or the operating system or the app itself. And the reason over the years I've come to appreciate change management and change control more and more in the formal process of doing change management is that we're going to help reduce the number of errors and problems that we are injecting into the network, including those related to security, if we go through the formal change control process, which we're gonna dive deeper to in this set of videos. And again, one of the balancing acts that we have to play is we have to balance you know, getting stuff done while at the same time maintaining our security, which includes availability. So think of that like a teeter-totter where we have to balance those. And not everybody in the organization has the same priorities regarding getting stuff done and security. So for example, if you go to an entry-level technician and you tell them, hey, we need to update the BIOS on this system, or we need to update a configuration on a switch or router, all they're thinking about initially is, hey, let's just get the job done. Well, on the other hand, a manager that's in charge of a department or an application or someone at the executive level responsible for risk analysis and the overall benefit of the company, they are gonna be very, very concerned about the security, possibly even more than getting an individual task or an update or change done somewhere in the system. And that's why it's important to have change control processes and procedures and approvals that are gone through methodically step-by-step step, every time a change is made somewhere in the enterprise. Again, that could be at our infrastructure devices, at our servers, at our clients. And when we make a change to one individual component, we also need to remember that that component does not live in isolation. If we make a change here, for example, that also can affect an application running here, or if we make a change to an app running here on one of these servers, or an app running here on one of these servers, that can also change the requirements and connectivity of getting to those services. And sometimes we're gonna see that we can't actually make the changes that we would want to because of some other dependency that's in place. Maybe we have a legacy application that's running here and although we would love to close certain ports or open other ports based on the legacy application here, maybe we can't at the moment do the upgrade the way we intend to on the server because of the application or applications that are in use. Another critical aspect regarding change management and control is test, test, test. We want to validate before we're actually making an update in a production environment. Whatever that update is, we want to make sure we have practiced it to the best of our ability so we know what the possible outcomes are. So if we're doing some testing, we say, whoa, whoa, <laughs> as a result of this upgrade, these functions or these apps or these services no longer work. And it would be way better to find that out in a test environment before doing it in production. And one of the benefits of change management and change control is that we can communicate, for example, Windows, where we're gonna be doing the updates, and we can document what the rollback processes are gonna be in the event it doesn't go well. And that way, no one's in the dark. Everybody who is concerned or has a vested interest in the service or the system that's being updated or changed or modified, we wanna make sure that all those parties are aware of what's happening and that we have the buy-in from the appropriate people as well. So let me clean this up a little bit. Let's talk about another very interesting observation that happens all the time. Early on in my career, I was doing some projects for one of the divisions of the government of the United States. And as I went into this facility, they had on the wall a topology diagram. 
that showed where stuff was. And this is a big diagram on the wall, a physical picture, if you will, of their network topology. So as I started to work with this organization and I started to send traffic through their network, I discovered that as traffic was going through, it wasn't going through, for example, this router, the IP address that was documented. It wasn't going through, for example, maybe this router. And what I discovered by actually sending traffic through and documenting the path that was being taken is that the topology and the documentation was old, meaning somebody had printed that at some point in time and it was valid at that point. But as things are changed, we need to make sure that we're also updating our documentation as well. And that should also be part of the change control process. And that way there's an accurate reflection in documentation, not only topology diagrams, but also in documentation such as IPAM, which is an acronym for IP address management, so that we know exactly what IP addresses are being used where. And in today's world, if we have anything on paper, on physical media, it's very likely that it's gonna be outdated very, very quickly. So a lot of times we'll have some kind of a solution for our topology and documentation and our configurations that are stored digitally and their password protected so that only the authorized individuals who are allowed to make changes or even maybe to view those documents that is controlled through username and password and authentication before that information is shared and or allowed to be changed. And that way, if it's digitally kept and it's communicated where that information is, the goal as part of change management would make sure that when we go to refer to that documentation, that it is kept up to date and that it is accurate. And part of that documentation should include versioning information as well. So if we are concerned about, okay, what is the BIOS version, for example, on this server? Or what is the version of the operating system running on this router or this firewall? Or what is the version of operating system or the applications running on this computer? We wanna make sure we're tracking that as well so that if there's some security vulnerability that comes up, we can go back to our documentation, search it and identify exactly where our vulnerable systems are based on some vulnerability that's been discovered. And then we need to go back and identify where we need to implement some additional controls or updates to protect against that new vulnerability. So now that we've taken a big picture look at some of the concepts regarding change control and the relationship to security in our environments, in the next video, let's dig a little bit deeper into some of those details. So we'll see you in the next video in just a moment. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.